Hello guys, welcome back to the bench, and it's an exciting day here, for me anyway. I've been waiting for these lacquer paints from Tamiya for a while, and uh, while they're not available in America, I can now easily order them, and they get here in less than a week. Even though that was from overseas, I will put a link in the description below, and uh, where I got them from, and if you're overseas, I guess you guys get these anyway, but here in America, it's just been tough to, to get these, but... Uh, uh, I like lacquer paints. I, I favor lacquer paints, solvent-based paints over acrylics. It's just what I was brought up on, and I just like them more, but that's my preference. However, I do like all paint, as you guys can tell. But I got what I could. I missed out on a couple colors. They, um, I would highly recommended their semi-gloss black. Can't get it anywhere. And one of their sparkle silvers. I got a couple of their silvers, but the sparkle silver, can't get it anywhere. I found a couple in, uh, I think, Hong Kong or Korea. And it was 15 or 20 dollars to ship the jar, and the jar was five, it was like 25 dollars for one jar. So I'll wait for my guy, the guy I got these from, to, to get them, is what I'm going to do. And I couldn't get their thinner anyway, nobody had their thinner, and I believe it's got a retarder in it, kind of like uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner. But uh, this is their regular lacquer thinner they've had in the U.S. for quite a while. We'll try it with this, and then we're going to thin it with this, and then we're going to try and thin it with cheap hardware store lacquer thinner and uh, we'll try it three ways I dropped my Titan rocket back there we'll try it like that and see if there's a big difference uh, this is my preference for all my lacquers so it'd probably be my go-to but I happen to have this on the shelf so hey we'll give it a shot when I can get the lacquer thinner from them I will get it maybe I'll do the test of the semi gloss black and uh, the white they didn't have they have flat white I want to test the whites I guess this is good enough for my white test I won't do it here because I'm doing a white shootout anyway here's what I got black flat black flat white pure blue pure yellow clear silver gunmetal light gunmetal see that. Italian red flat clear racing white what is racing white looks like it's an off-white you guys out there in the racing cars let me know what racing white is metallic black Mika red or mica red, however you pronounce it, guys. Let me know. Pearl white. I do like a pearl white. That was the old Audi color. Look at that. That's nice. Uh, metallic orange. That's a beautiful color. What do we have here? Racing blue. Pearl blue. What is racing blue? Oh, racing blue has a metallic in it also. Look at that. Pearl blue. Is that different? Let's see. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's good for a Gundam. Uh, two, uh, like a two tone. I'm working on a goof custom now uh, candy colors and these are the two candy colors but look it's almost like the same idea I put it on the spoons here so I can see the difference in the candies when I make the the kit and anyway look at that so there we go put that back that was racing blue that's pearl blue okay what do we have here pure metallic red I, obviously the metallic is settled because this is probably what more of what the color will end up being Pearl clear. This is pretty cool. I like these pearl clears. You put these over a color and you get a nice effect. Uh, what we have here? Pure orange, uh, clear red, dark iron, metallic gray. One of my favorite colors. How's the iron look? Oh, that's really dark. Uh, what is this? Titanium gold. Uh, nice color. Any of the titaniums are great. Titanium silver, clear yellow, and what we have here? Gloss aluminum. Maybe we'll try that out. Uh, Titanium, oh no, champagne gold, so that's two kinds of gold. Where's the other gold? Right here. Oh yeah, there's another one you can use as a two-tone. Wow, that's great. Titanium gold, that's champagne gold, and the last one up here is Mika Silver. Mika, again, let me know how that's pronounced. Mika Silver, Mika. Uh, anyway, looks like it's a fine pearlescent metallic. That's what the Mika usually means. And uh, there you go. That's what I could get. Obviously, I missed out on some colors. I wanted more of the clears. They only had the red and the yellow. Didn't have the blue or the orange, so uh, or the green. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll keep checking and trying to fill in the rest of these. Now the jar is much smaller. Let me get a regular Tamiya jar that I have here. All right. Speaking of clears, here's my clear yellow. Here, look. You can see the difference there. All right. This is 23 milliliters. I believe these are like 10. 10. So these are more than double the size. All right. I believe these cost me two change a piece with the exchange rate. 
and the $20 shipping, eh, spread it out over all the bottles. It wasn't too bad. Still came to a run with these costs. A little less than here. I think these are four bucks around where I live here in New England. But uh, that's the difference there in size. Now this is their regular, I guess this is their bigger distributed size. Um, let me see. Yeah, here is their acrylic. And this is, uh, that's the jar that they went ended up using. This is, I guess, by listening to you guys who talked to me on my, uh, in, the in the comments, a lot of you guys only get these and not these larger jars. I've only seen the larger jars here up in New England. But I guess across the country, you, you see more of these smaller lineups. I guess they made two different sizes. And uh, I think the price difference is only a buck, so I'd rather have the more than double size. Now, let me grab uh, Mr. Color here. Yeah, they, they, what they did is they just matched the Mr. Color size. I believe this is the same. What do we have here for size? Can't tell because they covered it up. Thanks. Yeah, it's all covered up by the warning label. Guys, let me know what size these jars are. It looks like it's about the same. It's got to be the same. Anyway, so that's the uh, Mr. Color size. That's their acrylic size. And what do we got here? Here's our black. All right, let's get these out of the way. All right, put those back. All right, I'm going to spray these with my uh, my uh, 270, my PS270 GSI. And I, I'm even going to try the, we'll go a little further with the, uh, the Badger Patriot. We'll give that a shot too. I'm only going to spray four maybe five of them and then I sprayed some already and uh, we just want to see how they perform and I'm also going to do a brush test I'm going to brush them on uh, some plastic and see how that comes out now the, I'm going to get into thinning it right now the thinning ratio is much different than uh, Mr. Hobby and Mr. Color because these are quite thin let me show you guys in the jar I mean they, they are thin as far as a lacquer goes I'm not used to seeing my lacquers um, cause, uh, anyway, as far as Mr. Color goes, this thin, I'm just not, it's it'd be really thin, but you still should thin them down. I'm going to go one to one, you know, a few drops and a few drops of thinner. Whereas you can go one to two, one to three with, uh, Mr. Color, but the Mr. Colors are much thicker than these, but, um, performance wise so far, what I've tested outstanding and, um, I'll go ahead and pick some colors and we'll head over to the booth. And uh, I'm going to let you guys know each one that I'm going to thin with each of these lacquers and we'll check the performance on that. Anyway, let me pause this. I'll blend these up and we'll meet you at the booth. All right, guys, we're going to start with Gunmetal LP19. LP this is the Gunmetal, not the light Gunmetal. And we'll start with Tamiya's own lacquer. I put in... Uh, it's hard to see. I did it off camera. How about this much on my dropper? So let's go in with that much here. There we go. Oops. Sorry, guys. Bumping the camera. Oops. Not quite as much as I wanted. There we go. And don't be afraid to thin it. You can thin lacquer paints right out. All right. Now, swirl. Usually we'll pick up everything you need. And there you guys can see the consistency. Do the old drag it on the cup. You'll leave a little bit of a trail as it runs down. That's a perfect consistency. The old skim milk, I guess, is the uh, terminology. Anyway, check that out. We'll do it again. See it? It'll stay up as it runs down. It'll leave past. It'll leave a trail of the pigments behind. See it? And that's it. This is enough. We're going to test it over. Um, so far, no primer has been needed, so we're going to go straight over a spoon. Maybe we'll put it over some black, too. Anyway, let's do the booth, and we'll try this stuff out. All right, guys, here we are at the booth. And we're going ahead with uh, the gunmetal, LP19. You saw it thin. We're going to go straight over plastic. It covers beautifully. Trust me. Ready? Here we go. This is 20 PSI. This is my 3.3 uh, millimeter needle. Now, this is obviously going to look different over the black. I'm going to do some over black in a second. But it covers beautifully. It covers like uh, my favorite lacquers, um, the Mr. Color stuff. But... It's got terrific performance. Um, this is basically the paint that is in the spray cans. 
by the way. That's what this is. And if you notice, a lot of the colors were never in the spray cans that were in their other acrylics because it wasn't the same paint. But these have the same names. Look at that. Look at that. We'll go over it at the bench. But it just goes on and covers beautifully. All right? Let's show. Uh, I got these plastic spoons, but see how shiny they are? I think I got these at Walmart. Look how great these things are. But these are great for testing your, uh, my all clads, you know, because they need a black base. Look at that. I'll show it over a, uh, dull color also, but look at that. And that's what it was before. Look at how good that covers. Uh, let's try it over some gray. This is gray primer. I'm trying to get the right gray. All right, check this out. So now you can see the actual application. But it, it just sprays beautifully. I haven't brushed it yet, and we're going to do that at the end of the test. Look at that. Really, really impressive. I'm glad because I waited so long for these. I'm glad they turned out to be this nice. Anyway, I'll get another color. I'll clean it out at the last color. I'll show you how I clean this out. And uh, let me go pick another color. And on the next one, we're going to be putting in the leveling thinner and see the difference. This is with their own thinner, and so far, it looks fine. All right, guys, next up is LP44. This is metallic orange, beautiful color. I thinned this one with Mr. Leveling Thinner. And let's see what we get. First shot over a plain plastic white spoon. How great is that? I'll let that sit. All right, let's try it over, uh, let's see. Let's try it over some light gray primer. I'm trying to pick out a spoon that's light gray. I keep a lot of pre-primed spoons here. Let's try that. Looks like the fan is making some noise in the spray booth, guys. Sorry about that. just sprays beautiful. Look how nice the me metallic metal flakes are on it. It's just beautiful. That might be done. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, it's just beautiful. With these orange type colors, you can really choose your shade, you know? The more you pile on, the deeper the candy effect, so to speak, looks. Look at that, that's like two different colors right there, see it? This is over gray. That's over white. I don't even have to mark it, because boy, I can tell the difference on those. Boy, this stuff sprays beautiful. All right, guys, next color, I'll pause this. Now I'm gonna try the hardware store thinner and see how that works. All right, guys, next up will be LP51 Pure Orange. I put this here because I thinned it with this cheap uh, lacquer thinner from, uh, I think I got this from Lowe's, but they also sell it at Walmart and Home Depot. Let's get that out of the way. So we'll see the difference on that. We'll go with the spoon. It's a little quieter. I'm running dual fans, but one of them was causing a, a ruckus here. So I turned that one off. So uh, we're going with one fan now until I can see what's wrong. Anyway, right over a plastic white spoon. Here it is thinned in there. Let's see what we got. I 
I like to give it kind of a rough go and then I come in closer and slower. I'm going to change airbrushes soon too. I want to try the Badger with this too. Look at that. It looks fine with the alternate thinners so far. I mean, I haven't checked them drying out yet, but... Uh, looks like no difference in quality. Wow, that came out nice. Look at that. I don't even have to try this over anything else. I mean, that's it. That's perfect. All right. I'm going to clean this out. Try another color. And uh, I want to show you guys how I clean the airbrush out. Um, maybe I'll do that now. Let's see. Right guys, here we are. We have a little bit of the orange in here. What I like to do is make sure it's all blown out. Sometimes I'll suck it out with my uh, with one of my pipettes here, clear it out. I keep uh, kitty litter down here that I put the paint in. And here we go. What you do is you're gonna take this lacquer thinner the cheap stuff from the hardware store. I store it in these little mason jars. It keeps it well. I labeled one lacquer and I have one labeled acetone. And um, you're going to blow some through quick. But what I like to do is I like to absorb the rest with a paper towel. Twist it out. Already partially clean. You're going to take this. You're going to pour more in. We're going to loosen the nozzle. Now this is the protective cap. This is the nozzle, the second one. We're going to loosen that. And what that does is, without me covering the cap, it reverse flows because you've broken the seal between the nozzle and the airbrush. So take your trigger, push down in the air, but you've got to pull back on the needle. And it spits out a little bit, so what you do is you keep your paper towel over it. And that's it. We're reverse cleaning it. And see it's a little orange in there? Now I'm going to take the paper towel again. I'm going to absorb it. And that's it. Now what I do, I do that because I don't want to blow through that dirty um, orange that I just blew through. I don't want to put the dirty thinner back to the airbrush. Now I'm going to reach across my desk and get one of my, these are gun cleaning uh, cotton swabs. And I like to get the pointy end and just get down in there. Can you see it? Because the needle's exposed and you can rub around the needle. It has a little bit of orange on there. That's it. Now we haven't blown through it yet. So here's what we do. I'll put a couple swats in there. Don't forget, you've got to close the needle, the nozzle. Turn it back on. Now we're just blowing clean thinner through it. Perfect. And what you do is you take, let me get a fresh paper towel, which is I keep right under my bench. Now look, we're spraying crystal clear. There's no, there's nothing on it at all. Zero. And what I like to do sometimes too is get my cheap paintbrush that I got from Hobby Lobby. They sell a package of these for like four bucks. And uh, you get a little thinner, because the thinner is still in there. You can dunk it in here, get the thinner on it. And I like to just go through. This is if I'm going to paint uh, multiple colors, like we're doing now. This is what I'm doing between shots, by the way, guys. See that? Now that nozzle is nice and clean. I like to cover it up, air dry it. And that's it. Blow the rest through. That's out. Look at that. Crystal clear. Nothing coming out. And we're ready to go. What was that? A minute? Maybe? Perfect. All right, guys, let's head back to the bench. I mean, back to the booth, and we'll finish up the colors. All right, guys, back at the booth, LP62. Let's try titanium gold. We'll try it over this glossy black spoon and this white prime spoon and see what we get. Now, this time I put it in the Badger Patriot, and this likes to push a lot of paint, so we want to be careful here and take our time. Um, the air pressure on this is 15 PSI. So far, so good. Wow, goes on nice. Beautiful color. Look at that. Let's try it over gloss black. 
and make sure this is clean. There you go, first coat, look at that. This was thinned with uh, their Tamiya brand lacquer thinner that I had. It goes on beautifully. Look at that. Beautiful. Wow. I'm going to put another coat on this one. See if we can darken it up a bit. Probably not. But, eh, a little bit. It dries a little differently too than what we're seeing here. This airbrush seems to like it. It comes out of this really good. Anyway, there you go. Oh yeah, it's, it seems like lighter. But I'm going to leave this the way it is. Alright guys, that's it here at the booth. Uh, I sprayed a few others. And I'm going to go do some brush painting tests now. So let's head back to the bench and brush some. And see how the, it brushes on. Alright guys, back at the bench. And what we're going to do is... We're going to do a brush test. Plain plastic and primered. Um, I am not going to thin these for one reason. These are pretty thin in the jar. And I don't want to go any thinner than that. And um, we're not going to go retarder or anything. We're just going to go straight brushing and just see the quality of the brushing. I'm, uh, I think I'm going to do this uh, gloss aluminum just to see how uh, that uh, metallic uh, metalizer type color goes. And of course I'm going to try traditional black because it shows up good on camera. As far as brushing goes, I've already stared these up just before the... I put the camera on. So, let's see what we get. We'll go with this primed piece first. Can load it up because I want to go right across this and see how it dries with the primer. Seems to cover really well. Can you guys see it? Really well. Wow. You gotta go a little thicker if it's gonna be a gloss. And the brush strokes sh should lose their way, you know, so to speak. All right, goes on nice. It brushes really good. Now, I don't know if you guys are painting giant Gundam kits or something like that, but when I hand paint my stuff, I, you know me, I, I airbrush everything, but the smaller pieces, you know, I'd be using a brush half this size, even more than that. So I'm going over the top just for the, for the video. You know what, it seems to go over plastic quite fine. It just it looks like it doesn't need primer at all. Now, of course, the aluminum might be different. It's a little more translucent. But there it is. I mean, it went right over the, the plastic. Really good. All right, guys, let me pause this. Let me wash this brush. Use my old uh, trick of the trade here. Let it sit in the thinner to let the clothespin suspend it so it doesn't sit and bend your brush by touching the bottom of the jar. Let's get that out of the way. Cap this. There we go. I didn't even have to pause the camera. How's that? All right. No. You know, they could have filled these up a little more. I'm a little disappointed with the uh, how filled they are. But... Uh, I should use the same brush just so we can compare, you know. This is a Model Master brush. Aluminum is a little different. Silver, it's a little tricky to paint, but I usually don't notice this because when I paint silver, it's usually engine parts in one of my cars. In a little, uh, dials on the dashboard and whatnot but i've had good luck with this where it dries and you don't see the brush strokes so that's over the primer i'll leave a little bit exposed so i know i don't know how this is going to come on on plastic but let's find hey, you know what covers plastic it, it covers it it really covers well it looks like this paint does not need a primer what's good is it doesn't have to be thinned either to be brushed you just open the jar and go to work
All right. I think we're good. I'm going to let this dry. I know I'm probably going to get up strokes with uh, this aluminum. It's just the way it is. It's just I'm doing such a big area, and it should be for smaller parts or airbrushed. I've always had trouble brushing uh, big areas with silver and aluminum. Anyway, we'll let that dry. I'm going to go put this in the dehydrator with the other pieces. Then I'll come back. It'll be about 20 minutes, and we'll see the results. All right, guys. See you in a couple seconds. All right, guys. Here we go. We got the results. Fantastic. Um... I sprayed a few of these off camera. These are the ones I did on camera. And uh, let's just go over them. I started off with the Mika Silver. I did this off camera. I did it over black. This is over the white spoon. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's durable. I've been scratching it. This is over a black gloss. You can see it? A knife, plastic knife. This is over a dull, not a shiny, black spoon. And it's pretty the same across the board unless you go over the white, you know. You're going to change the tone a little bit. But overall, it's uh, pretty much the same. Um, little little uh, different result here, but it's a flat surface. And I usually think, I, I always get different results with that. But look how nice that is. That's a nice looking silver. And it sprayed nice, it dried nice. This was a... Uh, LP 6 Pure Blue. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, you really wouldn't mind having your car models painted with this at all. Or even the blue. It looks like uh, the Gundam Blue, the traditional RX-78 Blue. Look at that. It's as smooth as glass. It just dried beautifully. And uh, like I said, I've been scraping it. It works good. Um, we could try a tape test. Hold on, guys. I'm going to reach across the camera here. To me, a tape test on to me, a paint. Oh boy, drum roll. Let's see what happens here. But lacquers are usually pretty durable. Yeah, that's not gonna go anywhere. This is over plastic, not even uh, primer. And this has only been drying in my dehydrator. It's only been drying for, uh, I want to say, not even an hour. And I could just tell it was durable. Their spray cans are durable too, and that's. Uh, it's the same paint, I believe. Look at that. Isn't that great? Matches the cap perfect. Oh, man. I'm so glad these turned out to be great. This is flat black. How nice is this flat black, guys? I understand their semi-gloss black is great. It's great for dashboards and stuff. I need it. I am searching for any. Anybody out there has any, let me know. I will take a jar. But this is the flat black. And look at that. This was airbrushed with my PS270. My Procon. Look at it. It's awesome. It doesn't even leave like marks when I scrape it. Usually you get that with the uh, matte blacks. It's, it doesn't have that powdery black. It's a smooth black. That is awesome. This was, I did these on camera now, metallic orange, 44. That's over white. Look at the quality of this. And this is over gray. Totally different uh, look. But like we said, you get all different results. If you put a black primer, you get a, a nice, you know, even deeper. It's just, you could probably use the same, like I said, one color for a model of a Gundam. If you're going to do alternate shades, look how cool that will look. You don't get the same shine over the, the primer, that's for sure. Unless you sand the primer. All right, this is pure orange, 51, over, just over plastic. Look at how good this came. You're not gonna, it's orange, but you ain't going to find any orange peel. That's for sure. Look at that. Look at that. Wow, that is awesome. And this is the gunmetal. Right, that's over the white plastic. That is a nice gunmetal. There's also light gunmetal. It's a different shade altogether. And this is 19. Yeah, they keep them together in, in numbering order. Look at this. This is over primer. Again, you're going to get it's going to be duller because the primer was a matte primer. 
but if you sand your primer, you can get it good. Personally, this doesn't, even with the durability, it doesn't need primer. It covers everything perfectly. And this is over the black, shiny black butter knife. Look at how smooth it came out. Can you guys see it in the reflection? There we go. Look at that. Fantastic. I am so excited that this paint is this nice. And the last one I airbrushed, titanium gold, and this was through the Badger, and it just did a beautiful job. Look. Matches the cap perfectly. There's also titanium, I think, silver. I should have tested that, too. I love titaniums. And this is over a black shiny spoon. Pretty much the same. That seems a little lighter. A little lighter. Go figure. I loaded this one up though. I put two coats in this. If you remember in the video just a few seconds ago. Alright. Now let's go looking at the brushing. Here we go. Now. Here's where you're going to notice you have to sand your primer. Again. Personally. You don't need it with this paint. This is over the primer. Now the brush strokes are gone, but you can see the rough surface of the primer in the paint. See it? Now, don't worry about the paint. It's not the paint. I should have sanded the primer, but I just did a I just did straight primer, straight brush strokes over it. Now, here is probably what you get if you sand your primer. Personally, you don't need primer. Look at this. This is the plastic spoon. I mean, look at this. This looks like I airbrushed it. Look, I'm going to roll it through the, the lighting above and you'll look for ripples, you know, in the reflection and you're not going to see it. It's that nice. Look at this. It looks like I airbrushed it over the pure plastic, you know, and I didn't I test this durability. It hasn't dried long enough, but I can feel already it is like glass. Now, see the difference? Primered, not. Stick with no primer with this paint is my opinion. Now, the aluminum, I'm sorry, aluminum, I gotta say that right, um, gloss aluminum, um, it, it's a shiny aluminum, but you're still gonna get the brush strokes, unfortunately. It's pretty smooth. This came out the same on the primer as this, I'm not quite sure why I loaded it up a little, no, actually, it's kind of rough, you just can't see it with this paint. You see, it's much shinier here, I can see it. But it looks good in the camera, but you can see some strokes here, but I think this stuff should be airbrushed if you're gonna paint it you just want to do your, your gauges, you know, and uh, the lettering on the back of cars, you know, like, uh, let me show you. Like, see this gas cap I painted here? See this? That's where you want to paint this. You're not going to want to paint a giant flat surface like this. You're going to do touch-up jobs. Let me charge it back up there. And that's it. So, um, I'm blown away. Right down to the brush painting over the plastic. Look at this. This is the winner of the show here. The fact that this brush like this, so it tells me most of your glosses, even the darker color metallics, probably will brush nice. The aluminum and the silvers, I think you're going to have to go in smaller bits when you brush. But look at this. I, You could paint a Gundam in this black or probably the reds and the blues, and I couldn't tell you if you rare brushed it or not. It, it's, it goes on that nice. Um, anyway, no difference in the thinners, so choose your thinner. I even used the cheap stuff. It came out the same. Um, no difference personally. I, I am going to get there leveling thinner as soon as it comes out. Uh, as soon as I, it is out, I just can't get any. I, I, but I use this for everything. I have two bottles of this in, in my inventory. You know, but it worked with the cheap stuff. So you can buy the cheap stuff too. I got this from Ultimate Modeling Products in the UK. Uh, I'll put the link below. And uh, let me tell you, they're in the UK. I'm here in the East Coast in America. I got this. On a Monday, I think I got it on a Friday. I ordered it on a Monday and got it on a Friday. A couple bottles came from Canada. It took two weeks. So these guys are the way to go. I love them. Also, I'm reaching back. You know that when I show you guys that chart all the time? You always ask me about the, the thinning chart. And it goes with this. That's them. See, it? That's the same company. So if you guys are looking for this thinner... It's also at this website, so make sure you pick it up. And they have the airbrush cleaner, too. Grab a bottle of each. Uh, you will use it with your, your all your acrylics, for sure. This is great to have. And um, anyway, great company. They sent me my, my Tamiya lacquers I've been waiting forever for, and I'm very happy for them for doing that. 
and uh, there they are. And that's it. There you go. I am uh, very pleased with these paints. Uh, uh, to me, it did not let me down. I wish I could also test their enamels. Those are even harder to find. Uh, most people in Europe don't even have them. I'm trying to get them. But uh, uh, the dream might be gone for getting the enamels. But I'm just glad I got the lacquers because I do love lacquer paints. And uh, now to know that they brush this well. And uh, it, it's just an awesome paint. Uh, it will make you guys look like the, the greatest painters in the world. It just it just levels itself out beautifully. And I don't want to ramble too long because I really do like it. I did want to show you guys one thing. Let me pull this out. Look at this helicopter model I got. How cool is this? It's the helicopter from Skyfall 007. The Augusta Westland. Isn't that awesome? It's by uh, Italy. As you guys can see. There she is. Look at that. Right, I think in the instructions or somewhere I've seen the scene from the movie where it lands. Isn't that awesome? I just thought it was just so unique to uh, to get this. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys that. Uh, anyway, uh, there you go, guys. I'm working on another video. I'm doing some homemade thinners and homemade airbrush cleaners. And I might do that video next. I'm working on that right now. And then I got more colors coming in Monday. The Pro Acryl is coming in. And... Uh, those should be here Monday, and that's going to be another full-blown test. I'm very impressed with those, too. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching the video. Please like it. It helps a lot. And if you haven't subscribed, do so now because I have many more videos to go. And thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.